Welcome back to Bean and Bracket Factory on episode two of the BSA C12 project. So in the first episode, I did some basic checks and I generated a bit of a shopping list of some of the stuff I needed. That has all now turned up. So now the plan is to try and start it. Let's get cracking. So I've been shopping and bought all sorts of bits and bobs. So this is the rubber battery box. This is pretty much as the original would have been. Uh, just notice it's got positive and negative just there. I'm not quite sure what's, how that's applicable, but anyway. So that fits in. I've already tried that in the bike and that fits in. This is the battery. This is not like the original. This is a tiny little thing. Um, and that will rattle around inside there and I'll put some kind of padding, some kind of spacer or wooden block or something to stop it rattling around. Uh, plugs. So uh, this is the original plug. It's got an L85 and I've bought some new plugs and these are the equivalent so these are B6HS which is the equivalent if you look up a equivalency chart it's the equivalent I keep on saying the word equivalent sounds weird um, I have bought this rear sprocket eye-wateringly expensive um, I don't quite know how I'm going how it gets fitted yet. I've seen what these holes are. Don't have to be riveted or quite what, but it'll all come out in the wash. This is a switch. Um, and there's nothing quite like a nice simple switch, and this is nothing like a nice simple switch. Look at that! What's going on there? These are all jumpers. So this is to replace the knackered one on the car. This middle bit is the ignition switch. Uh, that's the middle bit. Um, that's the middle bit. Yes, middle is off on emergency. And this here is the light switch, um, which is completely broken on mine. So I'm going to have to replace that. What else? Uh, I've got a fuse that I'm going to put on it. Uh, and I've got some little spade connectors, which um, fit this smaller kind of spade. And some wire, which I'm going to need to, I've got to repair the current loom because it's been hacked off. So uh, next step is to sort of fit all of this electrical stuff. I won't, won't bother about this right now. Fit all the electrical stuff and see if we can get a spark out of it. So let's do that. So there's the battery sitting comfortably inside there. So note it's a positive goes to earth and the negative goes to the loom. Now I've made this little connector because I didn't want to muck about with the original loom. Uh, obviously goes to this tiny spade and of course I'm going to wrap that in some cloth tape. Uh, so that's pretty much done. I'm just going to need a little spacer down there. Um, so I think I'll just grab some tape on there and then I can tackle that switch. Right now for that big switch. So this is the replacement switch. I've taken off the knob. The knob is held on by a little um, screw that goes into the machine screw that goes into the bottom so this um, comes off like that and this comes off like that and it's that flat which locates the correct position of the screw that's the remains of the flat on aluminium discs I might just knock that back into shape so inside here I've got this shroud which we'll have to undo again this is one of those um, talk amongst yourselves type moment you could, you could possibly very very quickly pop to the loo who knows right get this one undone though everything is as dry as an absolute bone which is a good thing I mean better than it being soaking wet isn't it so inside here we've got this grommet and this lifts out here like this. Now, the trick is, a bit of tape's full now, the trick is to make sure that I replace like with like, oops, upside down, like with like. This has got all sorts of jumpers all over it. I don't know whether any of these jumpers are needed. I am just going to take all these red ones out and just systematically replace it one by one. So. Uh, I'm probably not going to show you that, I'm just going to do it. Here's a little quick update of progress. So I am mid handover and I'm switching them one wire at a time or in pairs and saying out loud, green goes to 16, brown goes to 14. Um, so 
we're halfway through. Right, it's all transferred over now, and it was mildly ridiculous doing that. Um, half of me thinks, my God, that will never work. But I did do it one or two wires at a time, so fingers crossed, it'll all be fine. It'll all be fine in the end, and if it's not fine, it's not the end, as the saying goes. So we can now screw this back on. Well, attempt to. Goes in there like that. Right, got this spanner, a uh, nice big wide adjustable plumb spanner, just nipping it up and still moves slightly. Well, that'll get me going. So, uh, now to put this knob on, so this has got a screw which locates up underneath somehow. Where's the hole? There it is. Right, after much mucking about, the switch is on. It turns out that I actually bought a, 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 a U switch. It turns out to be false economy because it's all a bit knackered. Uh, it kind of wobbles all over the place. But this is the ignition on emergency. And this is lights on, off, or whatever they are, OPH. So um, now, actually, we're ready to, to test for a spark. So if I put that in the on position and kick it over, should get a spark. Let's see what happens. Right, the ignition's on, the lights are off. Let's give it a kick. Yeah, I don't know whether that came out, but we're definitely getting a spark, so that is success. Right, so we've got a spark, we've got fuel, I've got a leg. Only one thing for it now wheel it outside and see if we can start it. Okay, full disclosure, I tried it. Uh, I didn't bother wheeling it, I thought, sod it, I'll try it. And I tried it, and actually, it did kick into life briefly after many attempts, but um, I've found a few issues. Firstly, it wouldn't actually run, although it did burst into life, so it shows me that the ignition system actually works. Secondly, the whole thing is leaning over to a rather horrendous angle, which is something wrong with the centre stand. Um, I knew that, but it makes kicking it a bit of a pig. Thirdly, the kickstart uh, kick drives through um, the clutch, and the clutch is slipping. Uh, it means that sometimes you, you go down to push on the kickstart and nothing happens. The engine doesn't turn over. I've also got a, a leaking tap there. Um, so I'm going to have to take a look at the clutch. Um, and also it's got no seat, so I kept on bashing my thigh on that. So I've got a few things to sort out. But um, So anyway, to, to try and remedy the, the carb situation, I took the carb off. And of course, I should have done this the first time, shouldn't I? I've checked the main jet and the pilot jet. So this is the main jet assembly, that and that. That's fine. But this is the pilot jet. And guess what? It's completely blocked. You should be able to see through that. You can't. Um, and the sides of this main jet are blocked as well. So I'll sort that out, screw that back together, and then we'll have another, another crack at, at starting it and trying to get it run. But I really do need to sort out um, there's the site where you can see it leaning just there look I need to sort out that centre stand um, <laughs> it looks like yeah it's all a bit wonky I need to sort out that centre stand and a seat and the clutch before I can do any serious attempts so anyway I'm going to get cracking on the, on the carb again now right so I'm now doing what I should have done all along and I have completely stripped the carb and I've put all the parts in an ultrasonic cleaner and check them and clean them and I've used bits of cotton bird and I've gone down inside just to make sure everything is absolutely as clean as a whistle and it is now so I can now reassemble it so that's what I'm going to do and as I do it I'm going to show you what all the bits are so first bit I'm going to reassemble is the main jet 
and the main jet basically goes up inside the car body. So this is the main jet holder here. So I'm just going to screw that in. The main jet affects the, the running uh, wrong size spanner. Where's my big spanner? Uh, affects the high speed running, and you can't you can't make any adjustments. You can only change the size of the main jet. Um, it is what it is. It's fact set by the factory. So that goes on there like that. And this is the jet cover, which screws on there like that. So I'm just going to nip that up carefully. I don't want to. There, nice and tight. And on top of the jet uh, holder is this tube here, which screws in there, and the needle goes up and down inside there. So I'm just going to nip that up. When I took this out, there's quite a lot of crud inside here. Not a massive amount, but these holes are blocked and that isn't going to help anything at all. Every hole is there for a reason, so if it's blocked, that's not good. Now, this whole assembly goes up inside there, and um, somewhere I've got a fibre washer. Now, ideally, I'd use a new fibre washer, and I've got a new one here, but the new one's thinner. So, uh, and the height of this up inside there actually makes a difference. So, what I'm going to do is reuse the old one. Um, looking for my special stuff. Uh, where is it? I did have some blue hylamar somewhere. Uh, I'll pull that on later. So this screws up inside there like that. And this gas, this um, is going to go on there very carefully like that and screw up inside there. Now if I find that that leaks then I'll just have to replace it. Simple as that. It might well do. But it comes down tight. So that's the main jet assembly in there. So up inside here is what's called the pilot jet. And again, that was actually blocked. You should be able to see through it. Can I see through it? Yes, yeah, so I can see through it. That goes up inside there. And the pilot jet affects um, the running, the mixture uh, at tick over and low revs. Slow speed running. And you can actually adjust this. And you adjust this, I'll just seat it in quite nicely there. Not too tight. And then I put on this little o-ring here and that screws on there like that again not too tight right um, so it's adjusted with this uh, needle valve and the further that needle valve goes in, the richer it will run. So I'm going to wind that all the way in and start off nice and rich. So that's fully in and I'm going to back it off half one turn. So that's, that's as simple as it gets really. Now this is the float chamber so inside here goes the float. need to make sure it's the right way up. That is the right way up like that and then you you have a little brass spacer to stop it moving sideways and this is the uh, where is it this is the float assembly I was wondering whether that had a f did that have a fiber washer on it it must have done right there'll be a short intermission where I when I find the fiber washer I don't think there was a fibre washer. 
um, if you think about it, the fuel is going to rise up in here and isn't going to flow out of the top of there um, because it gets there is a, a, a level of fuel inside the chamber. So I'm just going to screw that in. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put the the needle valve, the um, shutoff valve, in there. Which looks in reasonably good condition. That's going to go in there like that. And I'm just going to screw the whole lot in. Like that. And you can see it goes up and down inside of there. I'll just nip that up nice and tightly. And on here, if we remember, is this filter. Which slides on there. And our banjo goes on there like that. I'm not going to tighten that too tightly because I have to adjust it in situ. Just, just pinch it up. That's that. We're getting there. This, uh, actually I'll, I'll stick this on first. I didn't actually put that in the ultrasonic cleaner because I didn't want to ultrasonically clean it because um, I didn't want it to look brand new, basically. It's left it as it was. Right. Put these in. This is a talk, oop, God, blimey, nearly dropped it. talk amongst yourselves moment again. Nip that down. Nip that down. There. Uh, last bit to go in is the. I forget what the proper name is. This. It's not a jiggle pin. That's what you have in a radiator. Um, this is a tickler. That's it. And all you all it's done. Oops. It is for pushing down the float valve, so you ca cause more fuel to to flow through which you might want to do when you're priming the engine. Right. Tighten that down. That's it. Not quite it, actually. Finally, this one goes up here. And this is um, used to adjust the height of the slide inside the carb, the body. This is, affects the... Um, tick over speed. Right, so I'm going to wind it up just to some kind of arbitrary level. Leave it like that. That's it. Oh, one more thing. O-ring. Stick that back in there. Right, ready to bolt back on the bike and see um, how we get on. So carb is all now cleaned up and he's back on the bike, but of course I can't start it because I've still got a sticking, slipping clutch rather. If only wood stick is slipping. So I've taken the cover off. That is the that is the cover there. Lots and lots of screws. Take it off, and I've taken the clutch to pieces. And what it consists of is some sandwiched. Uh, these are the, the friction plates, uh, which I've cleaned up. And this is the the middle disc. And this is the cover. And uh, I've actually ordered some new friction plates. Um, but they're not back yet. So what I've done, I've actually just cleaned up everything and I'm going to assemble it all back together, effectively dry, just so I can kick the thing over and, and try and start it. Obviously it won't run it for any period of time because there'll be no, no oil in here um, other than the oil that's already on the chain. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to sling this back together while the, the parts arrive and then I need to turn my attention to the confounded centre stand because it's bent like a banana. So I've got to get that thing off um, and straighten it out. So I'll stick the clutch back together first.
So case back on, I've only put a couple of screws in because I'm going to take it all off again, but I'll put the case back on so that if I do start it, I don't get my foot or anything caught in this chain because that would, it would really damage the bike and my body. Um, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, you notice there's lots of faffing around in lining up the cover, the cover because it has to be in exactly the right groove for the bolt to line up to actually clamp the springs in. So I didn't realize that until I started realizing it didn't line up. So next step is to get this center stand off, which could be a bit of a fight. So here's the center stand. Um, it was interesting taking it off because only when I took it off, I realized that the pin that holds it in also holds the gearbox to the frame. So the whole thing kind of sagged a bit. Anyway, I got it off and if we put a straight edge against the left hand leg, well it's straight, and straight on both sides like that, if we put it against this one, it's complete banana. So what I think has happened is that this surface here has over time has worn away and it's gone more and more over centre to sort of to there uh, and the more over center it goes the more bending forces are actually on it if it's upright there's hardly any bending force but if it's like that every time I kick start it or try to in my case it's going to bend it more and more and more so two things one I'm going to try and repair this build this all up with weld file it all nice and square again this is all like peened over look you know and when I've done that um, I want to try and get the oxyacetylene on and actually straighten this leg out which uh, will involve lots of heat and force and bending and heavy vices and stuff like that so I think I'll have a crack at repairing that first if I can repair that then uh, put some time into that then I'll have a go at bending it a six of one and a half does the other I can either try and bend it first or do that or do that and try and bend it second but I'll try that first So the good news is that I didn't I didn't burn the garage down, which is quite good. So you can see I've um, built up this with with weld and ground it um, sort of horizontal there. Likewise, that side. It's not the prettiest job in the world. It sort of was spitting and yeah, not very nice. Anyway, uh, also of course I have bent this and it's now pretty good. Um, it's not perfect, but it's a damn sight better than it was. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and offer it back up on the bike and um, see if it's uh, any better. And if it is, there's no reason why I can't try and start the, the flipping thing again. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Stand now fitted and she is remarkably upright. So if we go down underneath here we can have a look you can see how the stand now runs correctly on the bottom rail i've not connected the spring yet but it's now sitting quite nicely it's not leaning over so there's only one thing left to do wheel her out and try and start her mission accomplished it runs and it sounds quite nice actually there's no clouds of black smoke it'll tick over uh, so I'm quite pleased with that really uh, I can see the amateur flickering uh, so I know um, I've got a charge um, so that's all for this episode uh, the next episode is going to be doing whatever I need to do to take this round the block 
so it needs sort of basically a bit of an MOT really. I've got to look at the brakes, I've got to check that the oil system's working, it's got a dry sump system which I'll talk about. I've got to change the, the sprockets and chain. Front sprocket's going to be a bit of an issue because you can't get hold of them, so I'm going to, have to do some magic on that. Um, yeah, oh, and they're going to need a seat. Uh, so anyway, I think that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, cheerio.